hey you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Naja if you're new here I just want to say welcome guys today this was not a scheduled like video that I had planned on doing literally this was something that occurred late last night where a coaching client reached out to me and a lot of people will reach out to me and say hey what do you see okay with your spiritual eyes tell me if I'm overreacting what do you see in this situation okay and I trust that when the Lord shows something you know I'm going to reveal it to you and I'm going to let you know hey this is not a good idea and so this is what happened last night and that's how I ended up here to share the details um of my findings okay it's in to be honest with you, it's not even one of those things where it's like, okay, I found out something, you know, that just nobody else knows. But I think it's one of those things where it's just like, this needs to be said, this needs to be talked about. And that's how the Lord uses my ministry um, or uses me in my ministry is to bring awareness to things that people don't know is happening behind the scenes where it might look like it's one thing, when it's really a lot deeper than you think it is okay without further ado i want to welcome all of those who are new to my channel welcome i am so happy that you guys subscribed i'm happy so happy that you're sharing the videos i'm so happy that there are blessings to your life without the leading of jesus christ this channel would not be sustained okay i could not do this on my own i could not be what god is calling me to be I could not be bold in the situations that I am put in to speak against darkness without my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I give all honor to him for being able to do this, okay? And for him trusting me to do this. I do not take that lightly. I do not take that lightly. I just have to say that. So um, I welcome all of you. Thank you. And for those of you who are new and you haven't subscribed yet, I pray that you do so that you can continue to hear what the Lord reveals to me. Um, and as I share it, I share it from a humble space. I share it from personal experience uh, in hopes that it can help other people. Okay. So basically, and I'm going to share this information without, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not going to share anybody's personal information. Okay. Uh, but what was brought to my attention was there was a flyer that was given to me basically there was a flyer that was sent to me okay and in this flyer the average person would assume that it's just a flyer it's just something that someone is advertising for you to come to a fight okay and this was a flyer for a Mai Tai fight, right? And so I'm not familiar with Mai Tai. I don't know what the difference is between Mai Tai and Kung Fu or Karate. I don't know. I do not. But I can tell you the moment that I laid my eyes on this flyer, they had different stuff on it. That there was there was there was a picture of something that, that looked like a uh what do you call them you know the the dude with the with the little hatchet or knife thing and he represents death what is it i don't know but y'all know who i'm what i'm talking about right okay that was on it but i didn't even pay attention to that because that was obvious right so i just begin to look at the details that's on the flyer and when I saw the word demonstration, I didn't see the word demonstration. The Lord literally allowed the word demon and demonstration to pop out at me. And it was so weird to me because I'm like, I pronounced it. I said, demonstration. That's how the Lord allowed me to see it. He allowed me to see the word demon, not demonstration. To the point where I was so confused, I had to go and look up the spelling of demonstration and see that it wasn't something that they intentionally did to, you know, pronounce the word demon. They, it, the word just said demonstration. But I saw through my spiritual eyes the word demon. 
So, and I didn't even really listen. I didn't even realize that the word demonstration had the word demon. The first five letters was demon. I, that had never registered to me. So I immediately start saying, okay, let me go and start doing a deep dive into my tie. What is it? What's the history of it? You know, I know it comes from Thailand, but, but what's the history, right? So I just was like, let me go look this up for her because obviously she trusts, you know, my guidance in this area and I'm going to go and do the reason. One thing I can say is that when the Lord brings something to my attention, I can easily go and look it up, find the background knowing how to like arrange the words that I put in the search of Google to come up with, you know, the background to find out what is really behind what I'm looking up. Okay. And so that's what I did. I can't tell you what I did, what I typed in. I just am typing and I'm looking and I'm searching and I'm reading, but I typically will find it very quickly. I found it like in 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to read to you guys what I found. First, before actually going into the details of what I found about what my tie is, I actually um, ended up on this website where they actually do my tie, but they went into details about different things. I'm going to put it up on the screen so that you guys can see what I'm reading. Okay. Now this says Yak, which is a giant demon. Yak is a character in the, and I'm going to butcher these names. I don't really care. Yamayana, Yamayana, a key influence for Thai art and people, a green ogre like race. Yak is a great army under the demon king Ravana, who is in the fight against the Sri Rama. Being an opponent of Sri Rama, who's the ape troop is leaded by Hanuman. Yak symbolizes fer ferocity and endurance as can be seen as a statue or an illustration at the gate of Thai temples and other key places in Thailand. Thus, he has become a Thai character familiar to foreigners. All right. Now, then after that was some monkey warrior, Hanuman. And it's a central character in the Ramayana is substantially influential to Thai people and Thai art. And this is what they call my Thai. They call it art. It is, it's art. A white ape-like race of forest dwellers, Hanuman is an incarnation of the divine and a disciple of Lord Sri Rama in the struggle against the demon king Ravana. Hanuman is a key player in the virtuous army against the Yak which is the demon guard, guardian that we just read about. He is known for his incomparable versatility, agility, and might. His great talent is reflected in his ability, his ability to impersonate and magically become invisible. Let me turn my text off so you guys are not distracted. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, so now... After reading that, I'm like, okay, so let me let me do a little bit more of a deep dive because I really want to see or hear more. Like, what is what's behind this? Okay, I knew that there was more to read after reading that. There had to be more to read. So then on this, as you can see in this photo, I'm like, okay, what is this? So it says, I've written before about my theory. This is whoever the person is that wrote this, you know, who's done research and who's giving us the deets, okay? Or the T. I've written before about my theory that I don't know how to pronounce this. Fra Pirup arg arguably is the god, little case G of my time. Okay? There is no such officially designated god, but there is no doubt to me that this deity figure powerfully combines the elements that distinguish Mai Tai from many contemporary forms of combat sport fighting and is in that way a protector for a call to preserve those precious elements that may very well be lost to globalizing 
modern modernity what i wrote a few years ago this is a small holy statue that sits did it say holy okay that sits on a mantle in our apartment it is a bronze looking figure of a man a warrior posed with spear pointed upward at a diagonal at a diagonal across his body and with the other hand near the spear mint spear point he holds a bouquet of green his face is that of a demon his body that of an athlete he is a little known god little g much debated in niche circles or niche circles for a peer up he as i understand it is a kind of god little case g of war and battle but mostly is known as the god little case g of dance the one that leads the arts at his left hand come together both the spear point and the bouquet this is the unfathomable unfathomable combination of what makes up my tie in thailand for us in the west there is a fundamental division in how we parse the world there is the real and the unreal in thailand these two things come together to braid into something else people looking at fights want to say that's a fake fight or that's a real fight what makes them real or unreal are supposedly the intention of the actors but because my tie is an art and not only a sport these things come together it is ultimately both dance and violence the reason for this is timing listen carefully to this fra pirup happens also to be the god little case g of timing of finding the perfect moment Netshi, i don't know how to pronounce that made a big deal of this in beyond good and evil in greek there are two important fundamental kinds of time chronos is circular time and the time of the seasons and kairos is the time of the moment the perfect moment to act and a lot of times we may even hear um us as believers use i've never used it but i hear other believers that use it where they may say this is a kairos moment which basically means that it is a right now moment okay and the perfect moment to act okay kairos makes an incision in chronos so fra pirup is the god little case g of kairos and that would make me never want to use that word again. This is why he is God of the dance. This is why the Mai Tai of Thailand is both real and unreal. It carries the power of artifice into the world of the real, of violence, to steer it. It recognizes the moment of change and therefore may spend much of its time in the realm of the fake, the performed. It is steering the cooling schedule of the steel when all the molecules are afloat and changing their positions. In the West, we only think of linear time. For us, the real of fighting is merely the degree of heat in a fight and the application of force of one body against other bodies. In my tie for Fra Pirup, it is the point in the circle when real change can happen. It is the art of taking hold of that change and shaping it to a valued outcome. It is where the spear point and the bouquet come together. Okay. It gets deeper, all right? Some years on, I reflect back upon how much I've come to believe this. It's why my Thai cruise will urge you over and over timing 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 or why legends will praise Samart's genius as found in his eyes the god little case g itself appears to be a syncretic syncretic fusion of two gods little case g one related to the destructive powers of shiva now 
for those of you who do not know the false god little case g shiva is very much associated with um yoga yoga is the false god that operates i'm sorry shiva is the false god that operates through yoga okay so let me read that again the god itself appears to be syncretic fusion of two gods so the false god that's operating through my tie is a fusion of the first one that i spoke about whatever his name is fire fire off or whatever and it is combined with shiva it is a syncretic fusion of the two of them hence the spear perhaps an emanation of shiva the other is the presiding god little case g of dance and music of performance for those of you who do not know in my testimony i also spoke about my experience with uh mystical dance a lot of these dances that are done in these other cultures are specific to channeling these false gods in every culture they have them africa especially um in Buddhist, in Hindu, I mean, all of these different cultures have different dance, but it does not necessarily come off as being like a dance, like we're having fun dancing. It can come off as this act of what they call fighting or sport in violence is a form of their dance, okay? That is being orchestrated through these demons, through these false gods. Wow. One of the conundrums that Westerners face when trying to really delve into the intensity of Thai, of Thai Mai Thai is how much the aesthetics of scoring in face relate to performing postures, senses of timing, playing narrative themes in a round or across rounds. These are the art of the sport. When in the West, especially the era of MMAs, demystification, demystification of Kung Fu and Karate, Bullshito versions experience the term art much in the vein of artifice. So all of these are associated, okay? All of them. Something unreal, something just surface. What traditional ring Mai Tai embodied, though, I believe are the effective potentials of performance, the unconscious fathoms of what a fighter can draw out far, far beyond perfect technique or practices patterns. This, I sense, is the power of where Fra Parap reigns. Okay? So these false gods are all up and through you know, the, the act of what they're doing in these practices or in these fights. And so I'm sorry, y'all, I got a lot in here. There's a lot to read. I'm going to go over this stuff with you. And so if, if you're interested in, in, in knowing it, then stick with me because if you have little boys or little girls and, um, they are practicing karate, they are practicing Kung, Kung Fu or Mai Tai, just know the history this is not just a sport it's not just a sport like basketball and football their type this is a cultural again this is a cultural sport that is wrapped up in belief systems related to religion or that was created through false gods who are principalities over the those regions okay I'm gonna read a little bit of this part right here above this um, it says we are left somehow with an unsatisfying answer yes Thailand's Mai Tai expresses and comes out of a largely Buddhistic culture and hold several rites and practices which are religious in nature. The treatment of the Mongol, the pre-fight, whatever, 
are the most obvious ones. And even we might grant that in the cultural maturation of boys. And whatever that name is means boxing camp. And it has stood as an alternative to the maturation maturation in in the temple. Or we might even imaginally, we might even imaginatively acknowledge that in its history, temples were likely houses that kept Mai Tai and transmitted its form for centuries. A magic imbued Mai Tai that is likely lost today. But still, what is its religion? Are Mai Tai fighters doing anything religious that is intimately connected to their performance? Is the arduous or obedient training in Mai Tai in any sense a spiritual practice? I believe they are and there is. All right. So I'm going to stop there before I keep reading because I got some more to read. I got some more for you to read. So that is a lot of people's uh, question. And I, I want to first say this. These days, before you actually go in to start doing certain practices that you know are known in different countries, different cultures that we know are very spiritual in a sense related to Buddhism and Hinduism um, or because they're that their practices, their cultural practice are all wrapped up in New Age. This isn't a New Age practice, but this has an association with the same false gods operating through the Buddhism, the New Age, all of the stuff that's associated with that, like yoga. Yoga, people assume, is just an, an exercise. It's just stretching. But when they actually go look into it and see that, no, these people look at this in their culture as a spiritual practice. Each pose was not meant for the sake of exercising, but meant for the sake of channeling and giving homage to the false deities. All right, to a Hindu god or gods, many of them, lowercase g's. So this is the importance of us making sure that we are looking into things don't ever have the mindset of, oh, it's not that deep. Go look into it, okay? Because you are better off by going and looking into it and finding out beforehand than assuming it's not that deep and then go do it and find out later, oh, you've now opened some spiritual doors. When I tell y'all, the term that Satan is the God of this world, little case G, that means he is in mostly everything. Okay? He is in mostly everything, which is why it's important that you literally test the spirit, that you look up everything. What is the origin of this that I'm about to get involved in? Where did this come from? When did it start? What was the culture? What was the practices behind it? You have to question everything. Because if he is the God of this world, that means he has created and cultivated most of what you see. Right? Now, when I say he has created and cultivated, let's not get it twisted. We know that Satan is not a creator, okay? He's not a creator, but he is a copycat. So most of what you see is typically him disguising as light to be mimicked as we're in relation to what we think is God. So typically we would see something that we think is peaceful, that is loving, that is joyful, that is healing. And we will think in our minds, there's no way Satan has anything to do with this. That's what we would think in our minds because 
We would not think, I, I don't know why we think that Satan is not more clever than we are. He is more clever than we are, which is why we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us see with spiritual eyes what is of him and what isn't. The only way that we are able to have the wisdom to be able to understand and see through his lies and his schemes is through the help of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is the fear of God. When we fear the Lord and we serve him and we ask for his guidance and his leadership, that is my friend, how we are able to test the spirit and know and be able to determine what is not of God through the help of the Holy Spirit for the reason why those who live in sin are not able to discern because scripture says that he blinds their eyes so that they cannot discern what is happening. They cannot discern what is wicked. So they may think that what they're doing is oh peace and joy. Oh, I'm taking off my shoes and I'm going to walk in the, in the grass and I'm grounded now. Oh, I have this hidden knowledge and I'm just so woke. Not knowing the character of God, the true God, and not being able to discern the enemy, the adversary. And they're right in his backyard. Let me finish reading. All right, this one says superstitions, tattoos, and evil spirits that are associated with my Thai. The Thai people are known for being superstitious and believing in evil spirits and ghosts. So keep in mind the person that wrote this is not a Christian. But I want you to, okay, see through what is being said so that you know that obviously there is something attached to it why they feel like they need to be superstitious to protect themselves even though we know jesus christ is the only one that is going to be able to protect and remove any you know evil spirits and there's no such thing as ghosts though they're demons okay for centuries my Thai fighters have used sacred tattoos wards amulets and spiritual ceremonies to ensure their good fortune and ward off bad luck and evil entities that may follow them into the ring why would they even assume that there would be evil entities that would follow them into the ring? It's because they are attached to them because of what they're doing in the first place. Not only that, because of the things that you have to do in order to even be a Mai Tai fighter, which we will get to. They often wrap fragments of their ancestors' bones in their headdress, which is called a Mong Kong or amulet tied around their bicep. This act represents the good spirits of their ancestors and protects them from injury and evil spirits in the ring. No ma'am. Some fighters and Thai people will go to temples, a witch doctor slash medicine man, or a high ranking priest who have Thai inscriptions tattooed into their skin. These markings are believed to be powerful and provide protection from negative influences like bad luck, ghost spirits, etc. When no, it's actually drawing it to them. That's why they feel like they're fighting bad spirits. It's because they're going to witch doctors and they are opening the spiritual door and inviting the familiar spirits and deities to attach to them. Okay. Other tattoos are told to grant strength, courage, long life, or sexual prowess. Before a fight, many times fighters would rub special oils and herbal mixtures or potions on their skin to make them invulnerable and impervious to pain and injuries. Guys, this is the reason why you have to be careful about buying oils essential oils and how essential oils have been used in witchcraft okay when i was in new age there were all type of um essential oils that were being used for certain purposes you never know what has been prayed over including certain candles so yeah okay i know a little too well 
in reference to the herbs and the oils and how they are created into potions because of incantations that have been spoken over them so that um, demons can affect can be can affect you while you're using it it's the same purpose as how things are used with sage how you might think that sage is warring off uh, or warding off evil spirits and uh, demonic energy when in turn it is actually a smoke signal that is telling them to come on in this is no different than these herbs and oils and potions that they're putting together thinking that it is keeping them from being invulnerable and uh, from having injuries. Special amulets worn around the neck were believed to wield distinctive magical powers. Some amulets contained written inscriptions with wards and protections rolled up in a small cylinder. Others came from important temples and bore images of Buddha or highly revered monks. The form in which these blessings came was beside the point. They were all meant to give the fighter confidence in the ring. My God. Okay. So let's go into this initiation and entrance to my tie. And that's all I will have for you. The Buddha was and described himself as both a student and teacher. The teacher is respected and held in high regard in Thailand. When young men want to become Mai Tai fighters, paying respect to their Mai Tai teacher and the gym where they will train is essential. The student must perform the Yak Crew or Kuen Crew. Becoming a Mai Tai fighter is not something to be taken lightly. It is not just a respected Thai tradition. It is also a way of life. And see, a lot of the things that they believe in these cultures, the things that they do are not just to do for fun. There is meaning and a way of life behind what they are practicing. Although it may come across as being fun whenever it's Americanized. Like, okay, this is just, you know, something just to, to, to beef up your ego or just to say, you know, oh, I learned how to fight in case somebody comes and attacks me. No, ma'am, this is a way of life for them. Every master Thai instructor has a different style when it comes to teaching and performing the Yak crew. There may be a monumental initiation where the prospective student will spend time meditating at a temple or performing ritualistic tasks to build character. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel and maybe you don't know that meditating is the devil. The Bible says to meditate on the word of God, but every other culture that practices meditation will tell you that it is a time for you to um, sit still, quiet your mind, and the peace is a form of meditation. You sitting, closing your eyes, blanking out your mind. The, the devil only tells you to blank out your mind. There is a scripture or a saying about the idle mind is the devil's playground. I'm going to see if I can find that. So in Philippians 4, 8, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Let me go to that so I can read exactly what that is in reference to so that we can better understand why meditating is not of God. Okay, so the actual scripture doesn't say that, but it is interpreted that way. Philippians 4, 8, an idle mind is a devil's playground. And it actually says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Sins begin in the mind. You don't even have to do anything or act out any way to sin. It comes, to, it comes so easily and naturally to us that we don't even realize that it is happening most of the time. We tend to let our minds wander about, thinking about whatever wishes, whatever it wishes. It tends to be a safe, 
place for our favorite sin. We hide it away in the innermost parts of our mind where no one can find it and no one knows about it. It's the perfect hiding spot for the porn magazines and movies or memories of past sexual partners. Mm. Reliving and re-experiencing past images and memories, pondering and meditating till your heart's content. All the while, everyone else remains oblivious to your sexual fantasies playing out in your mind while you work, eat, watch TV, talk to your friends, or even while having sex with your own wife. The mind is a powerful thing. It is a wonderful tool, but it can be a dangerous snare. Jesus, while preaching the Sermon on the Mount, said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in his heart. Okay, we know all of this. Let's get to the main point. So then it says, we all know the saying, idle hands are the devil's playground. That is not true. As already stated, you could be working and still be thinking sinful thoughts. It should go as an idle mind is the devil's playground. An idle mind is an undisciplined mind, a wandering mind. As Christians, we need to be disciplined in every aspect of our lives. So in order to be disciplined over our mind, how can we be disciplined over our mind if we're clearing it out and allowing any old thing to then jump in it, jump in it? When we are not disciplined in our mind, people think that being disciplined in your mind is being able to just clear it and not focus on things that um, you may feel like you should be focusing on. That's not what makes your mind disciplined. What makes your mind disciplined is by following what the word says to meditate on the word of God. It is not enough to just control our actions, though that does take much strength. The real battle is in the mind, for it is the thoughts of our mind that control our actions. So whenever we clear out our mind, the devil knows that if he implants thoughts into our minds or even not even in thoughts, he can literally implant things into us by clearing our mind and meditating. That becomes an open portal, an open door. And so if we do that and we just receive whatever He's willing to give us because we're, we're not being disciplined at that moment. We're not guarding our minds. Then he knows whatever he implants within us through that portal is then going to come out in our actions. And that's what he wants to happen. The real battle is in the mind. For it is the thoughts of our mind that control our actions. Without a change of mind, your outward com conformity will fail. Like a tree with a rotten core, the slightest push will knock it down. We need to be transplanted. We need to change our minds. Like it says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Did you hear that? On his law, he meditates day and night. It does not say meditate day and night by clearing your thoughts. Okay. I think that proved my point. Let's get back to the regular schedule program. Okay. So it said that there may be a monumental intuition or initiation where the prospective student will spend time meditating at a temple or performing ritualistic tasks to build character. So we know these are not rituals that are, you know, uh, acceptable in scripture that have been consecrated in scripture, like rituals that we do, like doing communion, okay, or using anointing oil. Those have been consecrated, which means they are made holy by God in scripture, okay? They are also usually expected to give a gift, such as a white linen cloth, flowers, Joss sticks, which is incense, and some small monetary offering. On favorable days like Thursdays for good luck and prosperity, fighters would gather to welcome the new student to the camp and eat together. The master Mai Tai instructor would ask for a blessing from his new student before placing the traditional Mong Kong on the student's head 
and tying an amulet on his bicep. Crazy. Crazy. And so that's all I have for you in reference to the things that I put together uh, for you. So I can tell you that if all of this is wrapped up in my time, you can best believe that karate and kung fu have very similar backgrounds. Um, although they come from different, you know, one is might be Chinese, the other one is Thai, but they are very similar. Their beliefs, both of them still practice um, Hindu and Buddhist heavily rooted things. Okay. And so it's very important that whenever we are going day in and day out, it doesn't matter if it's something as innocent as being invited to a birthday party or to another child who might be a teenager or an adult who might be a Mai Tai fighter and you think, oh, I'm just being invited to a fight. What is this? Would my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is a jealous God, might I add, be okay with me partaking in witnessing fights that clearly have derived from these false deities, these false gods, who we know after reading this is wrapped up all in the practice of these fights. Would he want us to partake in that if he's a jealous God and we know that there are false gods attached to it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Would your husband or wife, in the natural sense, be okay with you going somewhere that a woman or man has invited you to and you know they want you? Would they be okay with that? Because these false gods want you. They want to overtake you. They want you to indwell and be engrafted in everything they got going on. So would your husband or wife in the natural be okay with you going to some place where another man or woman is going to be that wants to indwell, partake of your spouse? Would you be okay with that? Absolutely not. You are married to Jesus. And so by you being married to him, that is a form of you. I, I don't want to say that it's a form of you committing adultery by attending one of these. But those who are actually involved in becoming a Mai Tai fighter. Yes, that is a form of committing adultery because that is assigned or attached to the practice associated with false gods. Now, attending Something like that is no different than you attending a gay wedding. Although you're not the one that's getting married to the same sex, by you being there, you are saying that you are in agreement with what's taking place. All right. So I'm just bringing the message that the Lord wanted me to come to a video about. I pray that you take it before the Lord. If you know someone who is actively involved, which I know a lot, a lot of people are, you can't say I didn't know at this point. Okay, take it before the Lord and then be led. And if he tells you that you need to separate from something, be obedient. Okay. All right. I'm done here. I'm done here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.